one of the points you make in your article, which I thought was pretty interesting, is you make this distinction between applying social psychology in organizations versus sort of what I would consider sort of a true social psychology of organizations. And I'm wondering if you can kind of explain what you mean by that, but also kind of why is it important to sort of make this transition from simply application of social psychology uh, to sort of a social psychology of organizations. Okay. Um, I think uh, as greater numbers of social psychologists have come into the field, what they have done is, uh, and I'm guilty of this myself to some degree, is, is come in with a hammer looking for nails. Mm -hmm. And so they have a process, whatever it is, I don't want to get in trouble uh, labeling two or three uh, theoretical processes, but, uh, but essentially something that's been validated in other social forms in, you know, in the lab and maybe even in schools or whatever, and then showing that it also uh, works in an organizational context. And, and that's fine, and, but I would call that applied social psychology. Uh, and uh, to me, uh, uh, the goal of social psychology in organizations is more characterized by some of the classic books by uh, Katz and Kahn or Carl Weick where they would discuss a social psychology of organizations in which the difference is is that you that it's more phenomenon driven uh, in the sense your goal is to understand what's going on in organizations and it can be done either qualitatively, quantitatively, a mixture of the two. It, it, it's agnostic by, uh, by method. Uh, we also tend to have social psychologists are most comfortable with lab research, so essentially even when they are trying to come to an organizational problem, they are essentially doing it in a lab context, and at best what you're getting is a, an in-basket exercise or something that is supposed to look a little bit like an organization. But you miss a lot of the nuance of organizations, how things carry out over time, and how they have, you know, the, and, and, and realistic and of importance and so forth. So, so the research is a bit different, I think, if, you, if your goal is not to necessarily to validate a social psychological theory, but to understand a process. And by de by uh, if your goal is to understand a process or a phenomenon, the, the research ends up being more interdisciplinary. The research ends up uh, looking at variables uh, that go in an upward direction, a lateral direction, a downward direction. Your research might start at some unit of analysis but then it moves from there to try to see what the influences are and how things operate across units of analysis. Usually social psychology applied to organizations is just either individual based or it might be a small group based phenomena and to see whether you know, this extends with, you know, with, with, with groups in an, in an organizational setting. And so to me, you're missing the essence of, of organizations and what's really interesting about organizations. It's also what's difficult about organizations in terms of studying them. It's much harder to study things cross level and, and how they evolve over time. And, uh, but I, I, this is not to say that, that the uh, applied social psychological research is, is, is not without value. I think it is valuable and uh, uh, it's a starting point and it provides a certain amount of understanding and resources, but then I think we need to move the, the step beyond that and, uh, and, and get out of the lab or out of a contrived setting and try to how, understand how things might evolve over time. And that's what I've tried to do uh, somewhat on escalation research over my career.